Good afternoon, YouTube. I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible, but I wanted to report to you about this wonderful news. A British Columbia judge finds double criminality in Huawei case. Extradition process continues for Meng Wanzhou. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, Huawei is currently uh, involved in spying on Canada. They intend to install a 5G network, which will undoubtedly be a threat to national security and to the privacy of all Canadian citizens. Meng Wanzhou is the CFO of that company and the daughter of the founder of that company. Uh, I just wanted to show you a quick bit of evidence before we get into her case that I found on the Epoch Times, so all credit to them. Uh, please observe and for violating human rights. For instance, the U.S. added Huawei and 68 related companies to the entity list for threatening national security in May 2019. And in October of the same year, 28 more Chinese companies and agencies were added to the entity list for violating human rights. These included Xinjiang Public Security Bureau and companies such as Hike Digital Technology, Migville Technology, and Dahua Technology which are engaged in the research and development of face recognition technology. Yeah, and they Recently, intend to install the US it here has in also Canada. tightened its export ban on Huawei, requiring manufacturers outside the US to also apply for an export license when exporting semiconductor chips made by the US technology to Huawei. The Chinese regime is threatening retaliation after the Trump administration closed the loophole that allowed Huawei to get around U.S. trade restrictions. In the past, Huawei exploited this loophole in order to gain access to advanced U.S. technology. And the Trump steal. administration is closing a loophole that allows Huawei to get around U.S. trade restrictions and get its hands on advanced U.S. technology. The Chinese Communist Party, CCP, is threatening retaliation after Washington closed a loophole, one that allowed Huawei to sidestep U.S. export controls and buy semiconductors from global chip makers. Last year, the Trump administration placed restrictions on U.S. companies selling to Huawei. The president didn't want sensitive and advanced U.S. technology powering the Chinese military, which Huawei is linked to, but the telecom giant found a way around the rule. Instead of buying directly from U.S. companies, it would buy from overseas manufacturers licensed to use U.S. technology in their chips. That won't be so easy anymore. All global chip makers will need to obtain a U.S. license before selling to Huawei, and most manufacturers rely on equipment produced by U.S. companies. The CCP is not happy about this. It's threatening to cause trouble for U.S. companies like Apple, Cisco, and Boeing. Huawei needs semiconductors for its smartphones. It's now the second largest manufacturer in the world. It also needs the chips to power its 5G ambitions. Okay, so that one there, that's the crisis facing the Canadians right now. That's what they want to install. That's what Trudeau is hiring that company for. And why he's such a fool to trust a company, criminal company like that. So if that's allowed, you know, of course, the easiest way to find out that they're guilty is that the CCP wants to retaliate, okay? Why would they want to retaliate if there was no harm? They're protecting their communist influence abroad, right? Huawei is furthering the interests of the Communist Party of China, obviously. So when you associate Huawei with Meng, associate Huawei also with communist China, human rights violations, murders, uh, the theft of technology. I've heard that they sent agents to every major American company and universities, implanted agents from China to pose as students or workers or whatever the case may need in order to steal technology and gather logistics for the communist China. The communist China. So, you know, so we get back to Meng. What's been happening with this case is that I think an element of cowardice by the the, the Canadians, especially Canadian government, uh, for allowing this criminal 
even to to think that they would allow her to return to China, you know, and especially I hate the way the media portray. You're going to see it in a second that they were trying to paint Meng as somebody whose human rights had been violated, and that she wasn't a criminal, and that she's a, like almost like an angel or a celebrity or something. If, if Meng is a criminal. Meng oversaw, she's the CFO, she oversaw the company's dealings in the past. She is fully responsible, if not partly responsible, for many of the crimes that that company has made. So, let's just watch the clip. Holmes, Justice Holmes says, when it comes to the sanctions as context, that Canada cannot import foreign law as part of an extradition proceeding. Legal precedent shows foreign concepts and context can be used. And that she is saying here that the concept of the U.S. Sanc sanction, rather, can and do play a role in this decision. Now, if you remember... Of course they do, uh, but they, Huawei is committing crimes against more than just the Americans. In the, back in January, the defense in this case, what they were arguing in the double criminality uh, case was that this wasn't a case of fraud, that this was um, a case of sanction complaint being dressed up as fraud. The judge, though, has followed the Crown's um, arguments that were put forward in January, talking about that this is a, the, the alleged fraud, bank fraud, wire fraud, that that's not only a crime in the U.S., but a crime here um, in Canada. Yeah, okay. So the good thing is, is that the judge is following protocol and not being politically biased on this case, like so many of the Canadians uh, in government. Uh in the closely watched ruling, Holmes wrote that the U.S. trade sanctions on Iran can be considered as context to understand Meng's alleged fraud without being an intrinsic part of the conduct. How can it not be? Right? If the, the U.S. sends sanctions to Iran for building nuclear missiles and says, okay, anybody who is caught doing business will suffer the consequences, you know, with in regards to Iran, you know, Maybe they shouldn't be doing business with Iran, right? So, you know, it's almost stupid how deliberately they, they distort the case to make it look like Meng wasn't doing anything wrong at all. It's, it's, it's a joke. Here, we'll continue. As well, the judge seems to say that the judge does not accept um, this proposal, the, basically what the judge is also saying that to have the fraud, you also have to have the sanctions. So when it really comes down to it, and there's there's more details coming in that I'll oh, have yeah. to digest, we'll have to digest and get them back to you. <laughs> but at the essence of this, what we were all waiting for in this decision, would Meng Wanzhou be allowed to leave Canada today if the judge ruled in favor of her and her... <laughs> would she be allowed to leave Canada today after being in custody so long? Oh my goodness. She's not even in real custody. Apparently she's been assigned a security escort, which is not actually RCMP troops, let's say. The Canadians are so under Trudeau, are, their hands are tied by an ideologically possessed Chinese sympathist. Communist Chinese sympathist, pardon me, no offense to Chinese. There are many in China that suffer under the reign of communism. So, take as Hong Kong. So, if you look at how the judge ruled, I, it, it gives me confidence that I hope in July that they'll just extradite it to the United States. But I want to let them finish before Defense I make all my comments. Or would the extradition proceedings continue? Well, the judge has ruled on double criminality. This extradition case will continue. We do expect an in-court appearance now. As you mentioned, Meng Wanzhou has arrived. And um, the expectation... Notice her is celebrity that, stardom sorry, here. We're just getting flagged that something is happening over here. So we're just going to swing around for you. A lot of action taking place. Mm. I do believe if I'm looking there that that might be some of Meng Wanzhou's supporters. Yes, yeah, these yeah. are people that I recognize that have been in court before um, with her. They, uh, they, they have supported her in the past, so... Uh, just kind of showing you as more people arriving. 
But back to today. Now, what's going to happen at about 11.30, there is um, an in-court appearance that was scheduled. And as you mentioned, Meng Wanzhou has arrived. And that was a time set aside that there would be any um, time, if, if the defense has any motions they need to put forward or questions as well as the Crown, we do expect it to be procedural. The next steps in this case now, we jump to June, uh, where I, I believe about t uh, two weeks time, uh, two weeks of time has been set aside for the court for a new portion of this extradition hearing, yeah. which will focus on whether or not Meng Wanzhou's rights were violated when uh, <laughs> she was detained. So She's a criminal. The extradition case continues. And keep in mind, we even have court dates scheduled into September. This is a case that could go on for some time. Yes, that's exactly what they want. And, you know, as mentioned, it, it, it well now, it'll at least go into to June. That's the next chapter, if you will, on this controversial extradition case. Yeah, yeah See, there would be no issue with her being a criminal at all. Like, under normal circumstances, if the media wasn't so possessed by this Chinese romanticism, uh, that it would be reported that the Americans wanted her in custody and then she would be technically in their custody. Or we would be holding her in a prison cell somewhere in Canada. Essentially, Meng has a lot of rights in this country that she's no longer entitled to as a criminal. And in the United States, she is a convicted criminal. And any unbiased court that would look at that case would probably come to the same conclusion. Okay? When the Americans imposed the sanctions on Iran, that was not a joke. That was because they were suspected of building nuclear weapons and so on. And like, you're going to stop or we're going to sanction you. Period. Like, Trump is not playing games like Obama. So, with Meng... It was extremely, extremely careless not to turn her over to the Americans. Like, to hell with our relationship with China. As far as I'm concerned, the world needs to reevaluate its relationship with China as a whole. Ask Italy. Ask Spain. The thing that really set me off is that when the Canadian media were talking after this particular interview here... Um, there is a, a gentleman that came on and actually was insulting Canadians and all of Canada's conduct towards China as if Meng had did nothing wrong and that Canada was in the wrong. Um, and that really, really angered me. As if China is the superpower, you need to respect us, you need to bow down before us. Canada bows to no one, right? We're a free democracy. We're among the greatest nations on earth. And supposedly supposed to be a free democracy. So your sentiment has no value here. Except with the retards and, and so on in, in government. But you see, it, it, it's, excuse my language. But it's, it's, it's come down to just... I'm sick and tired of people sugarcoating the issue. The issue is Meng's a criminal. So why on earth would we extend her any courtesy like that? If if this was unbiased, it wouldn't even have to go to court. Like the RCMP would have her in custody right now. And the fact that Canada is trapped in this ideologically possessed system is allowing her to basically roam freely. She's in custody, but she's in custody of her own choosing. And for a criminal, like, I mean, come on, come on. Would you put a convicted terrorist in custody of their own choosing? I don't think so. So it really, it's, it's, to me, if she's not extradited to the States, then I've lost all faith in, in the Canadian justice system because there's there's got to be, if that judge is permitted to keep ruling over it, because it may turn out that another judge will be appointed that's more favorable to her, let's say. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. Um, but no doubt her lawyers will paint this as a human rights violation and so on and so forth. I mean, But her conditions are better than humane. Because she would have been in a prison, she should be in a prison cell in the in, in the United States. So that aside, um, 
there's a lot of things that that uh, Huawei itself, like I don't know exactly how we could convict that entire company or punish that company for its practices, but I expect that the idea of war between the United States and China will be ever growing, ever present. Uh, whether or not that'll escalate to a physical war, we don't know. But what we do know is China has been the provocative one from the start, ever since they've been allowed into the game. And they've been stealing, corrupting, paying off, murdering. Um, their whole way to becoming a superpower. And under Obama, that kind of behavior was even promoted and enthusiastically embraced and allowed to thrive but under trump trump if trump could perform the actions that he wished fully uh, i think the united states would be far far more defensive than it already is and perhaps behind the scenes they really are um, but if i was president i may have declared war on them already for many other provocative actions that occurred before covid but covid was like the last nail in the coffin like they have declared war on everyone that's the kind of murderous sentiment that occurs from communist china and it's something that we as canadians we cannot embrace that kind of behavior we cannot allow Meng to 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 go free because that means a, a a a known criminal if she wasn't directly a part of the murders and the stealing and the and and all the other dirty tactics that huawei is using uh you know god only knows what she knows you know what i mean it, it's she could know a lot she could know maybe nothing i don't know I highly doubt she could know nothing. You know what I mean? As a CFO of that company, I doubt it. I doubt it for very much. It's 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 inconceivable that somebody in that kind of position in that business could be ignorant of its practices. So the crimes that they're committing is just absolutely horrendous. It's it's you know they're actually the company accused of violating human rights and i mean you've heard it from the epoch times what i like about that is that at least now they're so brave they're not even trying to hide it right huawei is getting more and more aggressive more bold they're, they're trying to to really push now that kind of influence and control that chinese uh, communist china wants so you know, one way or another, Canada is going to have to smarten up because uh, otherwise we're going to be under the influence of this country and that's not a place we want to be. Uh, Trudeau is a robot. I doubt he even under fully understands the consequences of, of submitting to something like that. A communist country in control, possession of a free society. Yeah, right. Yeah. The problem with Canadians is that, uh, as far as I've observed, many of you want to speak out against it. But, you know, there's a lot of argumentative types, let's say, that want to put you down. Like, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist and so on. And like, I mean, you know, it's just because you're not paying attention. You just aren't. And uh, if you speak out, speak clearly against this. Because, uh, you know, the propaganda war is happening here in Canada right now, like this second. And uh, you can see it in the press. They're, they're, they're biased. Look at it. It's only it's... great stuff uh, bringing us that. And we can see all the people behind you as well, the protesters. I mean, this is not only a legal story. It is a, a political story. A lot of anger on both sides. No doubt there'll be anger as a result of this. Oh, and as you've been following this story, yes, you know, like for that. CTV for a year and a half, ever since it all began, when she was picked up at Vancouver's airport back in December of 2018, seems like a Don't lifetime ago. But here we are. Script. And it's not going away. As you're saying, we're going to see this play out now for months and months and months ahead canada continuing to be found you know sort of in this diplomatic back and forth yeah. between china and the united states it's not diplomatic we should be pressing for her her extradition really
in self-interest. <laughs> there you go. Don't let China bully us. Oh, and I forgot about the Uyghurs. Yeah, they're murdering Muslims in concentration camps in China. Uh, so again, there's so many... You can only be ignorant for so long before you give... You take off the mask and you let China show their real face. And that's a murderous, murderous face. The remnants of Chairman Mao, let's say. And uh, Zhu Xiaoping really wants to be the next Chairman Mao. The next leader that led the utopia, let's say. And I've been doing a lot of research lately into this whole... Into how communism is enduring in our time. Marxism is enduring in our time um, when it should be utterly rejected by free society everywhere. So uh, I'll watch this case with much interest. Thank you for watching and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.